Hello YouTube, Sidekick here with a short video. I'm going to take a look at some of the changes that came out in the last DCS open beta release. Specifically, I'm going to take a look at the F15E and the fixes that were made to the CPUs or cluster bomb units. I see, in the initial release, it seemed like the CP CPUs really didn't work as advertised. Um, you're supposed to be able to program the fuses so that they burst at different heights, uh, and that didn't seem to be working. And it turns out that it was in fact broken, and now it's fixed. So we're going to take a look at what that means right now. Uh, so first of all, let's take a quick look at how to program the fuses. Uh, specifically, we're going to go out and with CBU 87s. So let's take a look at the display and how we program them. So we have the air-to-ground uh, screen up. We're just setting up a program here. Um, we'll drop all of the CBU 87s the same way. We'll only need one program. We'll drop them in CDIP and we'll drop one at a time in step mode and we're going to choose the fuse height setting and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Now we go back to the menu, we're going to go to air to ground load and then we're going to hit the step button until we see CBU 87. We're going to highlight CBU 87 on the side and we're also going to highlight it across the top and we're going to click fuse. Now you can see that we're able to make some adjustments to a variety of parameters the height in particular and the spin setting. So, Okay, now that we've got them programmed we'll head out to the range and just uh, for review let's talk a little bit about how a CBU works. Uh, when the fuse goes off the casing of the CBU breaks open and it spins rapidly and the submunitions inside are ejected from the body and they descend over a wide area and they're what actually explodes. Uh, so the CBU-87 submunitions are effectively mini kind of airburst uh, shells or grenades. They have a, sharp, a shape charge, a fragmentation, and an incendiary component to the warhead. And they explode just above the ground and basically spread uh, mayhem and misery. Um, they're meant to be lethal to personnel, equipment, soft skin vehicles, and maybe even lightly armored vehicles as well. Now, it's been my experience um, with that this particular CBU didn't seem to be very effective in DCS, at least not in the planes I've tried it with so far, far, like for instance the A10C. So let's see if any things have actually been improved at all uh, with this new modification. Uh, so as you can see when we actually did the programming in the cockpit, the fuse can either be set to explode by elapsed time after the drop or at a given height. We chose height. Uh, and in addition to the burst height, you can also program the spin setting, um, which basically means the higher the spin setting, the faster the, the case spins and the farther the bomblets will be ejected when it breaks open. So let's go up to the range and see what effect changing the burst height and the spin has. Okay, so we're coming around the back of the range here, and let me explain what we're going to do. It's going to be slightly different than normal. We're going to line up uh, on the target like we would normally for a CDIP or CCIP run, but then what we're going to do is once we get to uh, the point where we're going to release the CPUs, we're actually going to hit active pause and stop the airplane, but then when we hit the pickle button, uh, basically the CPUs are going to launch as if we uh, had continued flying and that will mean we can uh, sort of stand back and see how the blast pattern looks for the CBU and then we can change some of the menu settings and do it again. Um, we have to be careful we can't change the burst height uh, in active pause because it would actually change the release point but we can change the spin settings so 
Uh, we're basically going to, we've got them set for 500 feet, so we're going to roll in uh, as if we were going to drop them to burst at 500 feet, but we're going to check three different spin settings. We'll go, uh, we're at two, we'll go two, four, and six, and just see how much of a difference that actually makes. So here we are rolling in, putting the lift vector on the target, pulling the flight path vector up to the target, and then just when we're going to be ready to pickle, instead of pickling, we're going to hit the active pause button. Right about there. Okay, so now we're at active pause. Now we can actually launch a CBU, and there you see it flying out ahead of us. And in a minute, we're going to see the blast pattern. And you can see it's probably, uh, you know, the circle down there is about 50 meters. It's probably a little bit less than 50 meters. It's a shade. So now, oops, I'm setting it to spin number four, but I got a bit of a finger problem here. Okay, now we got it right. Hit enter. We're in spin four. You can see that at the top of the screen. After hit enter, so we can launch another uh, CBU. Take a look. Uh, that's pretty close to 50 meters. It's definitely bigger than the last one was. Not huge, but a bit bigger. And now we'll set it to spin six. Hit enter and try one more. And see where how big that one looks. And again, it's a little bit bigger. It seems a little hollow in the middle, maybe, but it's a little bit bigger than four, which was a little bit bigger than two. Now, at a burst height of 500 feet, it's not surprising that that's not having a dramatic effect on the width of the distribution. So um, let's set our burst height to 1,200, which I just did, but we're going to go round again um, before uh, we stop time there because the burst height uh, changes the release point, and so we have to do the run again. But we'll do the same thing. We'll start at 1,200 with a spin of 2, and then we'll try a spin of 4 and a spin of 6. So to remember, uh, at 500 feet, the burst pattern uh, the, you know, with spin 2 was probably uh, maybe 40 meters, and with spin 6, it was maybe 60, uh, maybe a little bit more than that. That's kind of the calibration. So we'll see at a burst height of 1,200 uh, how much difference that makes. Uh, I honestly don't know why you would prefer to change the width of the burst uh, by changing the spin setting versus changing the burst height. Uh, if anybody knows uh, how that's generally worked out, uh, that would be great information to put in the comment. Uh, I'll see if I can find out anything and maybe talk about it in a later video. So we're coming around again, going to line ourselves up on the target. Same procedure as last time, instead of pickling, we're just going to hit that active pause button and then we're going to launch our CBUs from, uh, from there and see what difference a spin pattern makes this time at 1200 feet instead of 500 feet. So we're approaching the target and we're rolling in. And we're pulling up to the target. Get the pipper below it, flight path vector over it, pull it up past, and let the pipper come up to the target. Right about there. And you can see our release point's a little different than it was for 500, maybe a little closer to the target, which isn't surprising since we want them to burst a little higher. Now we just need to set the spin setting back to two and see what things look like at a 1200 meter burst height in a spin of two. Okay, still a nice circular pattern. I'd say that's, you know, roughly equivalent to a spin of six at 500. Not too much different. Now we'll do spin four. Ah, this time we get something a little different. don't really see a circle anymore. It's almost starting to look like a diamond. We can see individual grenades bursting. Certainly the pattern's a lot bigger. I don't know, what do you want to call that? 75 meters across, maybe? And here's the spin six. And again, quite a diverse, and definitely a diamond pattern that time. And uh, you know, maybe almost 100 meters across, I'm going to say. So let's change our uh, burst height. Uh, we're going to start, uh, change it here before we start the run. And we'll change it to 2,200 feet. And we'll go do those tests again at a burst height of 2,200 feet, and we'll try three different spin settings there.
So you can definitely see that until we got to spin four at 1200 feet, we weren't actually seeing the individual bomblets. So they must have been pretty dense on the ground. So particularly if you're after fairly soft targets uh, or like infantry, I would say it's definitely a reason to try and go for that wider blast pattern. If you were dropping um, more than one, you could actually set them, you know, more than almost pretty much 100 meters apart, even at those spin settings, and you could get a nice long uh, line down a road or something if you were looking for a convoy, maybe. Now, if you're if you're going after harder targets, maybe you need to keep the burst pattern a little tighter and try to get, uh, you know, if you're out going after tanks, maybe you need to make sure you hit them with more than one bomblet or something. I'm not sure. Again, maybe there's a manual out there that talks about this, but uh, I certainly don't have any detailed information. We're just kind of doing some testing here to see how things work. Um, maybe in a later video I will try actually deploying these things and see if they work any better now, now that they're actually fusing properly. That might be an interesting video. Let me know what you think of that in the comments. Okay, rolling in with a burst height of 2,200 feet this time. And won't be surprised if we end up getting a little bit closer to the target this time to try and uh, get a burst height that high. Think about it, it's equivalent to being a thousand feet lower when we drop the bomb, effectively. Right about there, okay. Better centered than the last couple of times. Okay, so back to spin two. Hit enter. 2200 feet spin two. You know, still almost circular, so that's sort of close to spin to 1,200 feet at spin 4. Maybe a little bit smaller, maybe a little bit tighter. This is spin 4 at 2,200 feet. Okay, now that's, you know, at least as big as spin 6 at 1,200. And actually going quite long, maybe even a little bit longer than uh, the 1,200 foot one did. So one more time here, spin six at 2,200 feet. Okay, really big pattern that time. Probably as much as a couple hundred meters across on each of the bomblets as uh, you can see them individually. So definitely prove that changing height and spin setting affects the blast patterns of the CBUs. Um, what those various blast patterns would be effective against, we haven't really tested. Um, probably should do some missions like that. Let me know if you're interested in that or if you have some ideas about how we could test that. Uh, but at least uh, we know that that is one bug that has been squashed in DCS. And so now the F-15E CBUs act as expected, at least in terms of blast pattern. This is going to be Sidekick, signing off.